Hi, and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In this video, I'm going to take you through and show you how we can use WooCommerce and Visual Composer together to create customized pages. So let's take a look at how we can do that right now. So I'm in the pages section and I'm going to open up the test front page that I've created and we're going to start adding some elements to this using Visual Composer to create a customized home page that will show all the elements that we want to help sell products on our website. So I'm going to come down to my sample page and open that up so we can start editing the page. And as you can see, I've already created some basic elements. We've got a header at the top, we've got a couple of columns of information with some photographs, and we've got a section with a separator at the bottom saying our latest products. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at adding some product listings to our page. Now, when we work with Visual Composer, one of the nice things is as soon as you install certain applications or certain plugins like WooCommerce or Contact Form 7 and so on, it will automatically add in extra options that are available once that plugin is initiated on your website. So let's open up Visual Composer and let's take a look at what we have available to us when we want to work with WooCommerce. So let's just click to add a new section. And you can see at the top now we have WooCommerce as a new tab. So once I click on that, you can see we now have a range of different widgets that are specific to working with WooCommerce. So you can see we can put the cart contents, the products, products, add to cart, add to cart URL, and so on. So we can put whole chunks of information in there, or we can put in specific little elements and build those up to create very customized pages that don't rely upon using just the typical WordPress template. So you can see that we can do things like best selling products, sale products, we can put product categories and so on in there. So let's take a look at adding in some of our recent products. So you can see we have an option that says recent products. Once I click on that, that'll open up your typical interface inside Visual Composer itself. And you can see we've got just some basic options that allow us to specify the number of elements per page, the number of columns, how we want to order things, and if we want to sort them. So let's just say we're going to keep this simple and we're going to use just four items. We're going to have four columns. That's fine. We can choose order by, and you can see we have a range of different options in this. We can order by the date, ID, author, and so on. So let's just say we're going to set these by their date. And then we can specify, do we want it to be descending or ascending? So let's just choose descending for this example. So you can see that's pretty much it. If we wanted to make sure that this was the same default settings every time we loaded this uh, recent product settings in, you can see we have the option, the little cog in the corner. We can click on that and it gives us the option to save this as a preset so we can call it back up from any of the presets we may create. Or we can set it as default so every time we use that uh, widget inside this website with Visual Composer, that will be the default range of settings. You can choose either or just leave them unchecked and just carry on working. So for that, this example, we're just going to leave them. So I'm just going to click on Save Changes. That will now insert that into the page for us. And if I just click Update, and then we'll switch over to the actual front end of the site, we can see what we have available to us. And there we go. Looking on the test page, you can see we now have the three latest products in order. We can click on those and go straight through then to the product itself. So that's pretty cool. So if we come back in and we'll take a look at some of the other options that are available to us. So let's come down and we'll just duplicate this little separator. So we'll copy that. We'll just reposition that below our recent products and we'll just click on there and we'll edit that. And we're going to change this now from latest products to best selling products. So we can click on there. Now we can go in and we can add another widget. So we can click separate this down to WooCommerce and you can see we now have the option if we want to we can say best selling products so we can click on that and you can see this gives us even less options now so we can say how many per page we'll set that again to four and we'll have four columns so everything matches up hit save changes update our page now we don't ha actually have anything that's sold on here so nothing's really going to show up but if we refresh the page you'll see we now have the three products that are the only ones we have in there, so we don't have an empty section on there. And we can do exactly the same again if we want to. We can come down and we can choose anything we want from, for example, the sale products. So let's click on that. We'll set this to exactly the same as before. So we'll just set this by ID. Actually, we'll set this by date. And we'll say descending order, hit save changes. 
duplicate this little separator and just drag that in between. And then we can just rename this now and we'll put sale products. Actually, let's just put on sale. There we go, hit save changes, update that. And what we'll do is we'll just quickly jump into a product and set that to be on sale. So let's just go to our product section and we'll just choose any one of the products we have in here. And we'll just choose this one. And once we put that under sale, so we'll put that down to 2 dollars so it's on special offer. Hit save, so that's now a sale item. So we come back to our test, refresh the page, and we should now see there's our sale item, all styled up telling us it's on sale. So very easy to create these custom looking pages very quickly inside Visual Composer. Okay, so that's pretty cool, but we can do a lot more than just that. What we can do, let's just say for example, now we wanted to create our own custom page. So let's just close, get rid of these two sections I just put in. And we'll leave the top, well, actually no, let's get rid of that as well. So what we've got is just our heading. So we'll just drop in a new row. We'll split that out to be, uh, we'll leave it as it is for now. So what we can do now is we can say, well, I want to create a custom page. So actually, I yeah, will split this up. I'm going to put a picture in this side. So I'm going to put a single image in there. I could do any, any element that I want in this example. So let's just say I'm going to take this book cover, for example, and we'll leave that, well, I'll leave that as it is. We'll put it in the center, not too worried about any of this. And we'll drop in some text in there. So we'll put a text block in. And we'll just put some filler text in there that's about the book. There we go. So we create our custom page. Well, now what I can do is I can start adding in some additional WooCommerce-based elements. So if I click to add, we come to WooCommerce, for example, I can now say I can put add to cart. So you might think, well, what exactly is that going to do? But what it allows us to do is we can choose a specific identifier, an ID or a product SKU or product title, and that will allow us to put in an add to cart that's specific to this page. So if you're creating a page that isn't a shopping page, you know, a dedicated shopping page, but you still want to give people the option to purchase and you want to integrate your WooCommerce into it, you can do it this way. So we can now build up completely customized pages with their own dedicated buy buttons, which is pretty cool. So let's just say... Um, let's take a look if we can find the item a second. So let's just start typing in the product name. There you go, Practical Guide to Gig Photography. You can see we can put uh, inline styles in there if we want to, but we're not going to worry too much about that. So let's just hit Save Changes. So we've now created our own dedicated product page that's laid out how we want to lay it out without having to rely upon those default templates that are part of WooCommerce. So if we update this page now, and we'll jump over to the test site and take a look. So there we go. We've now got our customized page. And as you can see on the left-hand side, we've got our image. We've got our text on the right-hand side. And our Add to Cart button. Now, obviously, you'd probably want to style this to make sure it sits in line with exactly how you want it to look on your website. And WooCommerce makes that pretty straightforward. But what this should show you is that you can use the Visual Composer Builder to create customized pages that you can get to sit exactly the way you want inside the design and then link in the widgets for WooCommerce. Now, we're not limited just creating product pages. We can go in and we can create customized cart pages, checkout pages, and so much more. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you a kickstart on how you can use Visual Composer and the WooCommerce widgets to create your own customized pages. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else that we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. We'll read everything you post and try to answer as many questions as possible. Well, until next time, take care.